back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question 155, min stack. Okay, so in this question we want to design a stack which supports push, pop, top, and we want to be able to retrieve the minimum element. Now the main part is we want to do all of this in constant time. So I do think this question is on the easier side. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to explain the entire thing, okay? So to start off, we let's just go through what a stack is very quickly. Okay, so a stack is a data structure and it follows a principle called L LIFO, okay? And what it stands to is the last in value, okay, is the first one that goes out, okay? So the best way I have to explain this is kind of using a bucket. So we add values like this and we remove values from the top, right? So let's say I added the number one, then I added the number two. So now what is the last value I add, added, right? The last value I added is the number two. So now when I want to remove a value, I can only take out the topmost value, which is the number two, okay? So now if I add the number three, it goes on top. And now if I want to remove it, uh, so when I say pop or remove, the I get the top value, which is the number three. So three goes out. So that's the basic principle called last in first out. Okay, so uh, how exactly are we going to represent this, okay? So I'll just talk in terms of Python, but the basic idea is gonna stay the same. Uh, I'm going to use a array, okay? So uh, I'm gonna initialize a empty array, that's it. So now let's say someone wants to push a value. So in that case, I'm just gonna add the value to the array. So just append it, right? So I would first add the value one, and then two, and then three, so on and so forth. So now let's say I want to get top. Okay, so top, what is that? That basically tells us, so let's just represent the stack as I did earlier, right? One, two, three. What is the topmost element? So essentially, since I'm using an array, it's just whatever is at the last index, okay? So the way we get the top value is by just indexing the last index, that's it, okay? Now finally, how do I pop out a value? So essentially, I go to the stack and I'm gonna pop out the last index. So it's gonna remove this three, that's it, okay? So this is gonna be push, top, and pop. So now this is where it gets slightly complicated, which is how do I find the minimum value in constant time? Now the big O of one is the main thing over here. So essentially, the, let's look at the main easiest solution, which is I could just find the minimum of stack. I right? just take the minimum of this entire thing. Now the problem is this is gonna be big O of n, okay? So what is another solution I could do, okay? So let's say I have the stack over here. And what I could do is I could keep track of the minimum value. So let's say the first value that goes in is the number three. So currently the minimum value is three. Now let's say the next number is the number two. So now what happens is the minimum value is gonna get updated to the number two. Now let's say I add one, obviously it gets updated to one. Now let's say I had 100, it stays as it is. So the minimum value, I have it over here. Now here's where it becomes slightly more complicated. So essentially what happens is, so over here, if the user asks us for the minimum value, I'm gonna return one, which is correct. Okay, so now let's say I pop out the value 100, okay, and I ask for the minimum value. Well, the minimum value is still one. Okay, so now let's say I remove the number one. Okay, so essentially now when I return the minimum value, it is still one, okay? And the reason for that, so let's say I even, let's say even if I want to update this value, I do not know what the previous values are, right? So now to find the new minimum, I'll have to go through all the values again. So that is going to be an additional big O of N. So this is not a proper solution. So instead, we're just gonna change it up slightly, okay? So let's say now what I'm gonna do is at each point, I'm going to add a value and I'm also gonna add the minimum so far, okay? So let's say first I'm adding the number three, okay? So I have a number three and so far, what is the minimum? Well, given just the number three, the minimum is the number three, cool. So let's say now we move on. So now I have the number two, okay? So the value is two. Now what is the minimum? So all I have to do 
is I need to compare it to the previous minimum, which is three. So two and three, obviously two is smaller. So the new minimum with the number two being added is the number two. Okay, so now let's say I add the number five. So now I compare it to the previous minimum, which is two, and obviously five is greater. So the minimum stays as it is. So even though I added the number five, the minimum is gonna stay as the number two. That's it, okay? So now let's just see what happens when I add the number negative one. So I add negative one, and essentially what happens now is I'm comparing negative one to two, and it is smaller. So now by adding negative one, the minimum is minus one. And finally, I'm just gonna add one last number. Let's say I had 100. The minimum still stays with minus one. So why is this important? So essentially what we're doing is we know that, so if I look at the number five, the minimum of this over here represents the minimum up to the number five. It does not account for everything after that. So essentially this gives us the correct answer every single time. So now let's say I ask for the minimum. The minimum is the number minus one. Okay, so let's just say I pop out this value. I also pop out this value. So now I don't have the minus one anymore. So now if I ask for the minimum, it's the number two, right? So because the minus one did not exist when we added this number, right? So let's just say we move on and we pop this value and we also pop out this value. So over here, the minimum is just the number three. Okay, so essentially by keeping track of the minimum, we know what the minimum is up to that number itself. So let's say we added uh, three numbers and the minimum over here is going to be the minimum with that number itself and everything below it. It does not care for what is above it and that shouldn't matter to us uh, either, okay? So this is how we are going to solve this problem, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll just explain the code very quickly. Uh, one second. Okay, so essentially uh, we have our stack, like I said, it's just a list. Uh, if I want to pop the value, I'm going to do stack.pop the last index. Uh, top is going to return uh, the last index. Now remember, I'm storing the value comma the minimum. So I need to return the value, which is at the zeroth index. Now for the minimum, I'm going to return the minimum, right? So the last value and the minimum is at index one. That's it, okay. So now let's see how are we going to push a value. So let's say what we're pushing is the first value. So in that case, to the stack, we're gonna append uh, the value itself and the minimum is also gonna be the value itself. That's it, okay? But now let's say the stack is not empty. What we do is we first add the value and now we have to compare the minimum. So we compare the value, the current value, with the last minimum, okay? So that is the last value, self cell stack minus one, and its minimum. So we compare the current value with the previous minimum, and if it is smaller, the minimum is gonna be the value, but if it's not smaller, the minimum is going to be what the previous minimum was. It's gonna stay as it is, which is this over here. So that is going to be our solution. Um, and yeah, so if you submit this, this is going to get accepted. So you can actually do one other small thing, which is essentially you could have a, a another stack and you're gonna use the second stack to keep track of the minimum. And at any point you pop out from the value, you're also gonna pop out from the minimum, okay? And the idea is exactly the same, right? So instead of storing, so let's say I have one comma one and zero comma zero over here, right? So instead of storing it like that in one stack, I'm gonna have one stack of values. So these are just the values. And I'm going to have another stack which keeps track of the minimums. So let's say now I add the number minus one. The value is minus one and the minimum is also minus one. And now let's say I add the number 100. Well, the value is 100, but the minimum stays as minus one, okay? So it's the same idea, exact same thing, but I have two stacks, that's it. So yeah, uh, and they both take up the same amount of space so I don't really think it matters. So yeah, that should be it. Thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions.